Hey everybody, Judy Seeger here, back with another episode of Detox and Recharge TV, your number one online TV show to show you how to stay strong, how to stay healthy, and most of all, feel alive. You know, each and every week I have very special guests I find and I get contact with them, and this week's episode is absolutely no exception. I have a wonderful guest who's going to teach you something that I know most of you have heard about, but don't really understand. And so we're going to chat about this kind of therapy actually is what it is in a way and I want you to understand it in a deeper level so in order to get the replay of this I want you to share this with your friends and family and all that go to my website www.judysegerdetox.com and you can get this replay to share it with everybody else all right so let me introduce you to my guest a wonderful guy here that is becoming my new best friend Dr. Eric Zielinski thank you so much for being on here today Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. It's, it's an honor. It really is. Yeah, and the really cool part about you is that you are right out there and tell everybody you're a biblical educator, and I love that. You are a faith-based man who right off the bat comes right out and says it like he sees it based on what God tells you, and that's really awesome because that's how I feel too. And what I love about you also is that you're teaching people about something that has been around for centuries. <laughs> and so uh, people don't understand it. They just think it's just another product out there, but it's really, really therapeutic. So Dr. Zielinski, please tell us, first of all, a little bit about yourself, and then we'll get into what it is exactly you're teaching. Well, thank you again. It's an honor, and thank you everyone for tuning in. Just to give me an opportunity to share a little bit about my story. I am, I'm a person, I'm a man on a mission, and I just want God's best for my life and for people. I know what it's like being sick. Uh, I was a really sick kid. And, you know, when I say that, I wasn't the child at the Ronald McDonald house with lupus or cancer. I was just pretty much chronically ill. Um, and it all started when my mother decided not to breastfeed me and not for fault of her own. You know, there was a time in the late seventies, early eighties when it was becoming, you know, a little questionable. Does the baby get the right nutrients? Are there chemicals or drugs in the milk that we're getting from the cows that are going to the baby? So all this stuff really freaked my mother out. And because of that, I didn't get the first real inoculation. I didn't get the right probiotics that I needed as a baby. And from that, I had gut issues my whole life up until 13 years ago, up until um, I became a Christian at 23 years old, I was plagued by chronic gut issues that manifested in cystic acne that manifested in gas bloating. Um, there's a gut skin brain connection. I'm a definite sufferer of that. Um, I know what it's like having the gut manifest itself into, or I should say poor gut health manifest itself into um, panic attacks, depression, even suicide ideation. Like folks, 75% of your immune system exists in the gut. And if something is wrong in that precious part, Part of your body, it will affect every aspect of your life. So I was sick, not doing well, had really no purpose in life, kind of just squandered around life. And until I had, I had one of those dramatic, I was kicked off my horse. I was blind. Now I see moments. I became a Christian and I was enlightened. I use that word very, um, very carefully. I was enlightened to the reality that I needed to take care of my body. I needed as in my opinion, a spiritual act of worship to really make sure that I was doing my best. And, you know, being a faith-based person, whatever faith it might be, it's not just about following a set of rules or following the dogma. It's a matter of living a way of life that, in my opinion, should be honoring to God. And so, that happened. so when that transformation happened in my life, the glowing reality was, you know, I'm not taking good care of myself. I was smoking a pack of cigarettes a day at the time. I was smoking for five years. I was drinking, I was on the, yeah, I was just a lot of stuff, a lot of things I shouldn't have done. Drinking a pot of coffee a day, in addition to all the alcohol I was doing, just because just to numb the pain. And I was a young guy, but you know what? It was still a way to medicate myself because alcoholism runs in my family. And so I know the risks. And so long and the short of it is just, in, uh, just blessed, blessed with a purpose and really feel God putting on my heart to share a message of health and wellness. And to me, I consider myself and I call myself a biblical health educator. I'm actually a trained public health researcher. And um, that's where my background is as a medical writer, research writer. Um, I'm using the skill sets that I have from that life 
that experience to bringing that into uh, just a well-balanced knowledge. I, I consider a well-balanced knowledge a, a biblically inspired evidence-based approach to the abundant life. Like how do we live that? So we could talk a lot about that. I don't want to go on and on. I have a lovely family. My wife's pregnant with her fourth baby right now. Um, whereas granola natural as you get, we've delivered all natural home births. Our kids aren't vaccinated and, and we just try to live our life the best that we can, you know? That's awesome. And there's like a million directions. I would love to go with you on all that. Uh, but I want to get into how you got into a particular type of uh, healing that, uh, like I said, has been around for centuries. And how did you get into it? Let, first of all, let's reveal the secrets. Tell everybody what's behind the curtain. What is it that you actually teach mostly that you really have sunk your teeth into? So I'm a biblical health educator a public health researcher that specializes in essential oils. And I'm actually getting um, formally trained in aromatherapy. I'm getting certified as an aromatherapist because I recognize that my understanding as a researcher really just, just brings me to a certain point where if I want to take my understanding to educate the masses, I need to get more. I need to get more in depth. Uh, and that's it. It all started, Judy, all started because of research. One of my clients commissioned me to write a series of public health reports on essential oils. And I did. And I didn't know anything really about them besides my wife has used them for years. And I just kind of dismissed aromatherapy as smelly stuff, not really knowing anything else. And then after I looked into the research, combed through study after study after study, we're talking, man, uh, MRSA, you know, methylene um, staph resistant, just, just to think that these essential oils could be the solution to antibiotic resistant bacteria kind of really just threw me through a loop. Then I started doing other research because there was an article on frankincense and that begs the question, can frankincense cure cancer? Because that's a big topic in the online space right now. So I started looking at cancer. I'm like, wow, I had no idea essential oils can affect the cancer patient in so many ways. And one thing after another. So after I finished that task, after, after I finished that commission from one of my clients, just open up the door to me and my own thinking, my own knowledge of, I have to tell you, to me, in my world where I was at the time, essential oils really were the missing link. It was the one thing I really wasn't doing that I should have been doing. Um, to incorporate natural medicine because the compounds in these plants are virtually what a lot of the medicines are made out of. Um, we just are using synthetic versions of what God put in the plant. To, so I started thinking, why not get the actual thing? Like instead of putting Ben Gay on my sore muscles after a workout, why not get like diluted wintergreen or peppermint? And so I started really looking into the true alternatives. And then you start looking into the history and you see that people have been using aromatherapy for thousands of years. And we even have historical records of crude distillation procedures dating back to Pompeii. So we know that this isn't new, but you know, when I look at this bottle of essential oil, Jesus didn't have this. And the, for people to say, oh, well, the wise men gave Jesus gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Jesus wasn't slathering on frankincense essential oil. They just didn't have the techniques and the ability, the manufacturing to make what we see. Because right here is 250 drops of an essential oil. It's a 15 mil. And that's 250 essential, 250 drops or 250 doses of a potential medicine or a therapeutic effect. So when we look at what the ancients used to do, they used to burn leaves, burn roots. They used to put um, just, just pounds of lavender and cassia and frankincense resin in vats of olive oil, and they made extracts and made salves out of it. You know, they utilize the essential oils without really calling it essential oils. And then we see just healing balms being used since really the beginning of time. And up until what, the late 1800s, early 1900s, people started extracting the essential oils in the way that we know it today. And now we get this therapeutic effect. And, you know, Judy, most people don't realize, but in World War I, World War II, oregano oil was used to stop infection, not antibiotics. I mean, people in, out in Europe, our medics had oregano oil in their little kit to stop infection, not antibiotics. Enter antibiotics in the 1940s, and that's when these babies got the boot. Right. That's the bottom line. Once antibiotics say, look, we have the solution. You don't have to worry about this. You just give me a pill. And people wanted that. And so 
for all intents and purposes, the supply and demand of essential oils went plummeted up until about 10, 15 years ago. And we can just thank multi-level marketing companies because they really put oils back on the map. I mean, that's the bottom line. Aromatherapists have been using oils for four or five decades in America, solid. But until the network marketing companies started saying, look, this oil cure this, that oil cure that. And not only the companies, more so the people, the distributors. That's when the beauty of true net network marketing started reshaping our natural health system. And now essential oils are like the hottest thing. It's like the hottest thing. Well, what do you mean the hottest thing? It's, it's the oldest thing. It's the oldest thing. It was the most popular. It was the most needed. Now it's kind of made a comeback. So uh, I just, I just, I, I enjoy that history piece because you see the ebbs and flows. And I think we can see that with all net natural therapies. Yeah. And the thing is that I really appreciate you explaining a little bit about the background of essential oils. We're not, just so the viewers know, we're not here to promote one particular company, one particular brand. We're really here to teach you about essential oils and how they work in your body and how to use it effectively. Because it, yep. it, it, I'm an aromatherapist as well. I used to make my own formulas years ago when I had my clinic. I believe in them strongly. But the challenge is, is finding good ones and knowing how to use them. People just don't know. They get lost. And so that's why I really want to explain that part to the people because they are confused. They're like, well... You know, the distributor will tell them, use all these herbs and use all these essential oils and do this, do that. And they really don't understand how to use it and why they should use it. So yeah. let's get into, first of all, um, you told, talked a little bit about the history. Um, why essential oils? Like, why not just use the herbs? And, and then you're drinking tea over there. I see you over there. So <laughs> what about people just drinking teas or, or using um, the capsules? You know, I mean, uh, I'm an herbalist and we were taught. There's many ways to use herbs. You could use mm -hmm. as capsules, teas, uh, as an extract, decoction, uh, poultice, as many, many ways. But then here we're talking about essential oils. What is the power of the essential oils in our body, how it's used? Well, primarily it's, it's through the aroma. And that's one thing that we don't see in herbs. We don't see that herbs emit volatile organic compounds into the air, right? So what that means is this, to put it into perspective, you smell if there is a particle in the air that's emitting into your nostril, hitting the nasal mucosa in the nerve cells and triggering a response that lets the brain know, hey, there's something in the air and we call it smell. So we don't really think about these because we don't see it, but they're minuscule. So when you walk into an arts and crafts store, for example, and you just get hit, like this, by, like it's like you got hit by walking into a wall with that smell of aroma. That's because there are millions and millions of little particles, billions of particles in the air that are just woofing you. And you go get that outside because the door is closed. Yet how often do you walk into a store like that? Or maybe you go into a musty room. Like I have a, a deceased aunt who, God bless her soul, you know, she lived in the heart of Detroit. I don't think she ever opened up her windows because whenever we walked into Annie Irene's house, I got hit. I immediately got a headache because it was like she wore this musk perfume and I loved her. She was so sweet. She gave me bump cake and ice cream and ginger ale. and I just enjoyed those times. But why do you think we got a headache? Because there was something physical that triggered a response in my nose that let my brain know, hey, this is toxic. And my brain's response was to give me a headache to trigger that, hey, you got to get out of here. Because that's one thing, folks, we need to remember, pain, inflammation, redness, that's your body's signs to say something is wrong. It's never a sign to say that something's good. And if we get a chance, we can talk about detoxification side effects and essential oils because there's a huge myth about that. And so the reality is aroma has such an, uh, can have such an impact on the brain that even scientists are now starting to dive into that. I mean, how many of us smell something? I could still smell a particular perfume and it reminds me of my first girlfriend. I mean, I don't think of her unless I interview and then I always talk about this, but man, I haven't dated her in 15 years. But whenever I smell that perfume, I'm like, oh, I remember her because it triggers that emotional response and it's like she's next to me. And that's why folks that battle with PTSD, stress, anxiety, we always recommend stay away from certain smells that could trigger that response. However, we could really um, um, train ourselves for no better word. And we see this with people who are in a traumatic experience um, for children who are battling, especially special needs children, to really um, condition them to do a, a good behavior with smell. Like, for example, the prototypical is sleep. 
a lot of special needs children have trouble sleeping, whether it's um, epileptic children or whether children with so, so many different disorders that could cause um, racing thoughts or apnea or what, what it might be, but there's so many different things. Cerebral palsy, for example, children oftentimes struggle sleeping. Well, if you have lavender, lavender essential oil, promote that through diffusion, maybe rubbing some dilutin on the bottoms of their feet or on their trigger points, on their body, behind the knees, on the back of the neck, on the wrists. If you start to associate sleep with lavender, bedtime story is a positive thing, you'll oftentimes find that the children will want the smell to help them to get to sleep. And it's not a matter of a dependence, but it's a matter of associating a behavior. Like we want our children to sleep, so why don't we give them a smell to help associate themselves with that? And some children, um, it, it's just beautiful because when they get older and if they're struggling, maybe at college or they're struggling um, in a home or in a different environment, they might go back to those smells to help them just give them that peace, that calm. That's why so many infants like the humming and the, the swishing and the, the shaking, you know, the five S's, happiest baby on the block. So I'm thinking babies right now, but you know, little baby Isabella is in my wife's womb and it's not quiet in there. She's hearing the gurgling and the churning and she's hearing all the digestive system in my wife's womb. And if you put a baby, an infant into a dark, quiet room, that kid's going to go nuts. It hasn't been in a dark, quiet room for nine and a half, 10 months. So why do you think the baby's going to want to be in a dark, quiet room? The baby wants those noises. White noise is a baby's best friend, you know? So same thing, we associate. And so it's all about the smell. First and foremost, smell is so powerful because it actually affects the limbic system, which is known as the primal brain. We're talking the seat of emotions and memory. Your primal instincts are in your limbic system and aromatherapy has a direct effect. Anything you smell will trigger a response in the immune um, in the limbic system. Now, the other part about herbs specifically is a they don't emit that smell like like oils do, but it's also concentration. I mean, you know, if this were a bottle of lavender, 150 pounds of lavender, that's a lot of lavender, right? I mean, that's a significant amount, or I'm sorry, up to 150 pounds, depending on the brand or depending on the extraction. It could be steam distilled. It could be extracted from um, solvents. It could be a number of different ways, CO2 even now. So if you want to get the effect of, let's say, two drops of lemon, you have to eat a half of a lemon rind. And many people aren't willing to eat a lemon rind. So it's also the ability of convenience because a lot of the herbs, a lot of the roots, a lot of the resins are distilled to make oil. So if you want frank, if you want the benefits of frankincense essential oil, you know, who's going to go get a frankincense, block a frankincense and chew on that thing? I mean, most people aren't going to do it. So it's also convenience, but two concentration, because like one drop of peppermint has the same effect of like 23 bags of peppermint tea. So um, I like it. I think it's a nice adjunct. I think it's a nice enhancer. And also it's a great replacement for the toxic chemicals in our soaps and lotions and potions and things like that. That stuff's just not safe, you know? And so what, what do we do? I mean, why not use a more natural component instead of something like Clorox or a hand sanitizer that has triclosan, which has been a registered pesticide since 1969. I mean, so when you look at it, we have a great deal of learning to do and we could just start, essentially we're going back to nature one step at a time. Yeah, and that's, that's awesome how you explained all that with uh, the toxins and how the herbs are really a great uh, substitute to get in there. And you're seeing more and more natural products. So let's get a little bit into the nitty gritty because people always ask, uh, well, my viewers anyway, they weren't like, well, that's great, but where in the world do I start? You know, how do I get into this, right? I mean, we'd love to go into their home and yeah. get all these toxins and, and help them and teach them what it takes to really um, live a life that they don't have to worry about disease. But uh, we're not in bubbles, so it has to be a slow step at a time. So with essential oils, um, what have you found as far as getting people started? As far as how do they start um, looking at essential oils that, that uh, they would consider helping them in preventing any kind of disease? Well, it really all depends on what, on what your pain point is. I mean, what is it that you're battling? What is it that you want? Um, I'm writing a book right now. And my, my book agent was like, well, what's the pain point? What's the pain point of the audience? What do they really need? What do they want? And my answer to him is it was, it's been hard because when it comes to essential oils, there is no universal pain point for people. You know, if someone has Hashimoto's, you know, the pain point is I want to get rid of Hashimoto's. I mean, if someone has, or if someone has thyroid issues, their pain point is, well, I have thyroid issues or whatever it might be. 
So when it comes to essential oils, I'm noticing that there's just a mass misunderstanding or just a mass amount of, I just want basic information, but it all depends on what do you want to do? So if you just simply want to like make your own soaps or your deodorant, cause you read an article and you found out that aluminum um, can cause Alzheimer's. So you want to give, you know, your, your antiperspirant the boot and you want to try something natural. Well, that would be a great way to start. Get a nice do it yourself recipe. I got them all on my website. I got tons of recipes on my website just start making your own deodorant. I mean, if your pain point is, you know what, I have, you know, a tooth issue, gingivitis or a sore tooth, and a, how do I manage with that? Well, you could do, uh, you could do something called oil pulling with a little bit of clove, and that's simply just putting like a tablespoon of coconut oil or sesame oil in your mouth. Swish the oil around for about 10 to 15 minutes. Add, add a drop of clove to that, and what that does, it works off of a process of known as saponification, it literally just breaks down, helps suck out the fat soluble um, toxins in your mouth, which a lot of toothpaste don't do. Because unless your toothpaste has a good amount of essential oils or a lipid, then your fat lipid soluble toxins are just going to stay there. And people don't recognize that when it comes to oral health care. So I guess the question is, I guess the answer is based off of a specific question. So that's, that's really one of the reasons why I created my database dude is because I cover everything. Like top home uses, all the DIY for food, for cooking, for home, for bath, bed, and um, you know, body products, um, diseases. We talk about everything from like cancer to diabetes to weight loss. So uh, there's a lot of different things that people can do. Yeah. What is your website, Dr. Z? Why don't we share that with everybody? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, DrEricZ.com and that's DrEricZ.com. Easy. And you also created a very awesome summit and you included all kind of information about essential oils on that. Let's chat a little bit about that so everybody knows. What is that summit all about? Yeah, this is actually, I have a part two coming up in August 22nd. Last year, it was really just shortly thereafter. Um, I don't know, about maybe six, seven months or so after I, I found essential oils in the research I started really digging into these things. I started buying them and I started working with my wife. And next thing you know, we started gaining a pretty good understanding of them. And people asked us to teach classes. So we started to teach classes locally and through, you know, friends and families around the nation. And it dawned on me, like, we need to do this on really a mass scale because I love helping people get, you know, traveling to speak to 20 people. It really isn't as economical as it is to reach as many people as we are right now. So I reached a couple of my friends and a couple of my clients at the time who were um, blogging and in this world. And I said, hey, what do you think about putting on an oil summit? And they said, yeah, sounds like a great idea. Do it. I mean, essentially. And so uh, one thing at a time, um, I actually found my good friend now, business partner, Jill Winger, who runs the Prairie Homestead. And I'm like, Jill, let's do this. So we really pooled our resources together. And we ended up with 165,000 people in attendance to that event last year. We call it the essential oils revolution. And the nice thing is the neat thing and something I'm really proud of is that it was the first time ever in a non-branded zone. We didn't talk. We don't. We can't. I've trained myself not to. But we don't mention any brand, trademark names, or anything, just so people, and especially because I don't want distributors or bloggers to think that they're going to like lose their viable income by sending people our way. I'm like, look, we're just going to talk oils. So we got chemists, bloggers, distributors. We had um, medical professionals, aromatherapists. And it really was the first time everyone got together in one place because it's always been dichotomized. And there, it's just like any profession, there is a lot. I mean, on one side of the spectrum, you have the aromatherapist. On the other side of the spectrum, you have the distributors. And there seems to be a big chasm that people don't want to cross. And there's, there's somewhat animosity between that. And because we could talk a little bit about that too, but there's reasons behind, there's a history behind that. So we brought them together and it was such a popular event. I'm like, well, how can I not do a part two? And so that's what this next event. And it's even, I like this one even better. Of course, I love last year. I like this year even better because A, now I'm, I'm a trained aromatherapist. I, I even know better questions to ask than I didn't even know before. I'm personally much more educated, so I feel I did a lot better as the interviewer, yet I also brought together a big portion of the aromatherapy community to, to balance out the discussion, and my co-host this time is Scylla Shepard Hanger, who runs the Atlantic Institute of Aromatherapy, and she, I mean, for all intents and purposes, she's the grandmother of aromatherapy in America. She's been around for, for like 40 years, and she's been doing this work selflessly. 
And I mean, we're talking first responder work in, in uh, New York City right after 9-11. She was in uh, helping with Katrina. So she's someone who understands the benefit and how to really help people significantly with the use of aromatherapy and essential oils. And she teaches, so she's a fantastic te uh, teacher. So she's brought together people I would never, didn't even know existed and didn't even know how to reach out to. That's the one thing I like to as well, is I like to collaborate with folks because I have my own sphere of influence but yet, if you add someone else to the group, now you just, you, essentially, you multiply you, you by two, threefold. And so I'm really, really proud of this year's lineup. Um, but there's a lot more we're talking about when it comes to DIY, when it comes to uses. It's less theory and more practical application, which is pretty exciting. And we get into some pretty deep topics. Like we have one day devoted specifically to some deep issues like mourning, grief, suicide, PTSD, sex trafficking. I had no idea what's happening in the sex trafficking world in America. And one of our aromatherapists that's featured on the event, she works with these precious women and she does great work with them. And so we're, we're going to be giving a good portion of the proceeds of the event to her work because she's helping. I didn't realize this, Judy, but 2 million women every year are sold into sex slavery in America. I'm sorry, 2 million women every day, every day are sold in America. And there are little pockets of people trying to help with um, special secret shelters. And Carrie Shane is one of them. And she runs an organization called Humanitios. And um, just that's a kind of, you know, this to me is truly a revolution. It's just not about, hey, how do I use this to cure X, Y, Z? No, it's really about how do we regain control of our health and how do we regain control of our life and what change can we have on the world? Wow, that's really awesome. I didn't know uh, you are going to be covering the emotional aspects. I'm a big proponent of anything and everything you could teach people to rebalance themselves emotionally, mentally, spiritually is a huge part of healing. Nobody talks about that hardly. They're all selling products and supplements and all this stuff. And it's like, no, you, <laughs> you got to talk about that stuff. So I'm really glad that you are. So if people want to um, tune in and learn more about that, where would they go to get more information? On the summit? Yes. Yeah. Um, the website is EO Revolution 2. Okay. So EO, EO Revolution, Revolution 2. Revolution 2. Yep. Awesome. All right. So that's really good. We could like have like a whole bunch more classes because there's so many things I want to uh, get into, but our time runs short and I want to make sure people get over to that site and look at what you have, understand who the speakers are and what they could learn. Now the summit is going to go for how long? The summit starts August 22nd and it ends the 29th. Okay. And the neat thing is we're going to be opening up sale, um, opening up the registration. Um, the end, it's, we're still, I'm not sure when this is going to air, but it's going to be the end of July. And when people register, they're going to get access to several interviews. And Scylla, Scylla Hanger and her aromatherapist interviews are all going to be featured. So there's going to be 10 interviews right there that people can really dive into. And then the summit itself starts on the 22nd. Wow, awesome. And all those great speakers, they're going to learn a lot. And you're going to really get into depth with them to understand. So if you understand what essential oils can do on so, so many levels. So that's really great. So all you people are listening. I mean, this is the summit that I really want you guys to understand because nobody else is touching this that I know on the face of the planet as Dr. Z is. I mean, he's really got a great lineup and the information on essential oils is awesome. But even going to your website, they're going to learn a lot, right? So again, your website is... Yeah, it's DrEricZ.com and check out my essential oil database on the sidebar. There's a little little banner that says essential oil database. It's an A to Z guide and it's just a lot. And I invite you to subscribe to my newsletter. You're going to get walk through how to use oils. I feature a bunch of interviews and eBooks and things. So it, it could be a lot folks, but the thing is, is like I tell everybody, um, you know, like going back to what we discussed, what's your pain point? Meaning what is it that you want? Like right now, it could be anything from a simple DIY re recipe to maybe an ailment you're trying to cure yourself. Start there, but go deal and focus on the lowest hanging fruit first. And if you're reading something or if you listen to the interview that we're talking about now or maybe an interview from my summit and you hear something, don't get overwhelmed by all the information because there's a lot. I mean, there's an infinite amount of ways that you could use essential oils and natural therapies. So figure out something listen to something that works for you and do it.
And that's really what the lowest hanging fruit is, something that's cost effective, simple, and something that you could implement immediately. Then once you master that, maybe that's that oil pulling technique I said, do that two, three times a week. Once you get that down, what's next? And then you'll find that in the tree, really the tree of life here that we're talking about, your fruit gets higher, higher, higher because you keep on picking the lowest hanging fruit. Next thing you know, you're picking the fruit at the top of the tree that you didn't think was possible a year ago. And when I talk, I want to remind people always that I've been living this way, I mean, devoted to this life for 13 years. And that's, that's a long time for some people. Yeah, for other people who've been around for 30 years, that's nothing. But either way, I have 13 years in this game and I've learned to be patient with myself and to celebrate my failures and shortcomings and also my successes. So I'm growing too. I really am. It's always a journey. And I'm, there's even things today that I'm doing differently than what I was doing even a month ago. That's right. And I, that's what I love about you. I mean, you're, you're a very down to earth. You're not pulling any punches. You just want to educate people, which is what you're all about. So thank you so much for sharing that information with us and being on the show. Really appreciate you, Dr. Z. Oh, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. So folks, uh, go to Dr. Z's website, get on the summit. It's coming up real quick here. And if you lose all that information, you always know, as long as you're a subscriber with me, I'll let you know. I'll make sure that you get headed in the right direction. And that's at judysegretdetox.com. You all know that because you're on my show. So we'll make sure that you get connected with Dr. Z and know how to use one of the most powerful therapies that have been around for so long. All right, everybody, take care, and we'll see you next time. God bless.